So it's not a Silverado ZR2, so I've got a whole lot of explaining to talk about what exactly happened to get me into this Jeep Rubicon. So here we are, 2022 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, and obviously this wasn't something I had intended to uh, get and have, but I needed something to replace that ZR2 Silverado. Uh, originally, plans were to stay in that Chevrolet family, kind of go to the big brother, that 6.2 liter, but it just didn't come together. Between some complications with the dealership and kind of some finagling that happened there, or the combination of the chip problems that they've been having in the delayed delivery date, it just wasn't gonna fit. So I had to find something that was quick to build that could get me off-road camping and doing the things I wanted to do, and the Rubicon was on the lot. So one of the things about this particular Wrangler that kind of caught my eye was, if you look at it, this is not your typical Rubicon level of build. It's got the plastic front bumpers, the non-body color fenders, non-body color roof, and really it looked like somebody that was gonna do some work to it. So I was able to get it at a really good price, but ultimately I become a super huge fan of the AV product line. And what I learned from the ZR2 Colorado, I love the fact that they did a lot of work with the OEMs to keep that kind of factory finish and performance. So I'm thinking this is gonna be a JL370 here. So that's the direction I plan to take this particular vehicle. So the Jeep has a multitude of powertrains available for this particular platform. And having come from something I customized with a supercharger and whatnot, uh, I wanted to kind of see what was available out there. I wasn't particularly interested in the 4xe full electric, but this happens to be one of what they call the uh, partial hybrids. It's the e-torque system. So it still has that 3.6 liter powertrain. It does have that improved eight speed transmission but it does have the power assist of an electric motor that drives the motor for low speed operation, kind of improves the fuel economy and gives you a little boost in torque, hence the e-torque name. Ultimately though, it still has the benefit of that Rubicon four to one gear reduction, which is really the nice upgrade from a sport or a standard line uh, Jeep Wrangler product. So along with that four to one gear reduction, in the transfer case, the Rubicon has a multitude of features uh, they're advantageous for the things I want to do. Obviously, it's locked front and rear. Uh, it does have a 410 gear ratio, so stepping up to a 35 inch tire is no problem at all. Uh, but also, it's got the higher fender flares. It's one of the features of the Rubicon, uniquely, distinctly you know, separating it from the uh, JKs of the previous generation is that you don't need to apply much of a lift to get a 35 inch tire under there. And with the 37, we will have to go up with the suspension, which is already about an inch higher than a standard base sport model. So inside of that JL370 package by AEV, they do some pretty major upgrades to the aesthetics. One of the first things you'll notice is that this does have the plastic bumpers, but even over the metal bumpers that Mopar offers, they've got their low tube bumper design, which provides better protection. But they also, because it's the 370, which means it's made to fit the 37 inch tire, has a tire carrier that can carry that 35 or 37 inch tire that's made to mount to the bumper and off of the tailgate. Ultimately, it is an aesthetic package as well. So you will have a front bumper, rear bumper, and a wheel package with the optimal spacing to keep that tire and the new suspension working properly. And speaking to suspension, we are talking about an 8100 series Bilstein that is tuned for the AEV package, depending upon what you wanna do. And really, I haven't quite decided whether I wanna go with that extra spring rate for some of the other camp gear and things that we're gonna go over today. So here we are inside the Jeep, and this is probably one of the things that kind of came to mind most about why I kind of had to migrate to something other than a truck platform. Uh, my intentions were always to go from just the mid-size truck to the full-size truck. and. Uh, I had to keep in consideration though some of the key elements on why uh, this particular car would make, uh, the, make the grade, so to say, for what I wanted to do. And really, it goes to the fact of why we see so many Jeeps on the road. They do a lot of these things very well. Uh, the inside has gone uh, leaps and bounds away from the original platform. Uh, if you go back to the TJ, the, even the JK on this similar platform, uh, the refinements are just there. Uh, we're talking about something that has an integrated roll cage, it has a completely removable top, so you can have all the fun off-road type experience, but they've done a lot for the refinement. Obviously, the Rubicon's come pretty loaded, and this one in particular, uh, Alpine Stereo, subwoofer, it's got all the kind of amenities inside to make it really comfortable, but even down to like the seats and how they fold down, I wanted something that kind of replicated my sleeping experience I had inside the Colorado, which was I put a topper on the back so that I had quick access to a completely sheltered area that in really inclement weather, whether it's rain, snow, uh, God forbid, you know, 40, 50 mile an hour winds that we get in the deserts here in California, I had a place to retreat to that would be on the inside where I'd be more protected for, or at least sheltered from most of the elements. 
Uh, ultimately though, I wanted something that could work as a good camper and still get me to that destination. And there's not too many vehicles as good as a Jeep in getting you out to those remote locations. And it does it quite well within the comforts that Jeep has put it into the new JL platform. So like I was talking about, I do want to have a similar camp experience. And one of the great parts about the Jeep is that it's pretty versatile from stock. Uh, the tailgate design, the fold down capabilities of the seats allow pretty much anybody to lay in the back and have a comfortable interior experience. Now, one of the things I wanted to do was actually delete those seats. Uh, a big part of this build is gonna be figuring out how I'm gonna offset the extra weight I'm putting in with camp gear and pulling out the stock seats and doing like a delete system. Uh, a full plate system like the stealth system that Goose Gear makes is something that I'm interested in putting in here so I can have an inside camp area. I can also maximize storage and potentially move from having just a cooler but also having a longer term off the grid solution with a full fridge and potentially even a cook stove that will be there uh, that I can kind of tuck away and still provide me with a good sleep area. Ultimately though, there is so many options in the Jeep market on ways you can configure. I do want some stuff unique, kind of like in the Colorado when there wasn't a solution for what I want to do with the suspension. I reached out to Camberg and they helped out with a double heim joint, fully adjustable upper. Uh, I probably don't have to do those kinds of technical things with the Jeep because it's already there, but there are some finishing touches I'd like to have in the kind of the camp experience. And, one of the things like looking forward, uh, I haven't seen a table set up that's exactly what I want. Uh, and I do have my ultra table that I have from Rig Supply. It doesn't quite fit here because it's a little hump, but I think I'm gonna build a storage piece and then kind of reuse that table in this application. And those are just the little things I wanna do to kind of take what's already available and kind of make it mine. One of the things I'm looking at to try to do, as I mentioned before, was kind of minimize the impact of additional weight. And if you've ever lifted the hoods on these things, they are a little bit heavier and it's an opportunity spot. And I've had a relationship with the guys over at Anderson Composites and I'm looking to do some carbon fiber work to help reduce some of that mass. So they do have a really nice carbon fiber uh, hood that has the uh, Rubicon look to it. So it still has the extractor vents and such on it. Uh, but between the grill, uh, the fender flares and the hood, uh, ultimately, I'm looking at saving 40 plus pounds off the vehicle and providing a little bit of a unique look. I still can't get rid of the fact that I'm still a performance guy who can enjoy what goes on with the carbon fiber, but I'm probably gonna do some paint aesthetics to kind of tie it a little bit more together so it's not just a full carbon fiber hood, but something that's kind of representative of the style I want. And I've still gotta kind of figure out what I wanna do with the overall look. The Stingray is a beautiful color, but I kind of want to give it my touch as well. So looking at the engine compartment and kind of understanding this whole kind of partial hybrid in the e-torque, there's a lot different in here than I'm used to seeing on the 3.6. And doing some research, obviously, one of the first things I found out is there's like three batteries in this vehicle. The primary battery, which we're all used to seeing right up on top is one, and this does everything you would expect it to from the engine starting normal operation. However, they even stuck the smaller motorcycle battery that's below it because this has one of those gas saving and kind of economic features, the start, stop and signal lights. And that's to help take the load and burden off the start and stop off the main battery. Now with the e-torque, there's a third battery. It's a 48 volt battery that's set aside that's down under the vehicle that just runs that e-torque motor. So all it's there to do is kind of assist with the low end torque demand that it's needed when it was originally developed for that four cylinder. But on the six cylinder, it gives you a nice kick in the pants for acceleration but it also helps off in that start stop function to kind of get you going and rolling. And you don't really notice the vehicle has that kind of delay anymore with that electric motor assisting the gas motor under those start stop conditions. So that's a quick walk around on the project. And of course, this is gonna be something I'm gonna be building out and probably going through the same mistakes anybody who's trying to build a vehicle with all the parts availability has today. But I'm hoping to document that all and kind of put together something that I like out of this with all the pool of information that's out there. And of course, with all the experience that I can gather but at the same time, I wanna combine some of those cool things I've learned about our industry and some of the industry manufacturers into my build. And I'll be documenting that whole process on my YouTube channel at Exhausting Life. And you'll see all the stuff I've done with my Colorado ZR2. On top of that, you'll see all the new things I'm gonna be doing with the 22 Rubicon Wrangler.